All right, hello everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Just a Girl from Cleveland. This is episode 119. Uh, more sad vibes this week, not as happy as I was last week. I was jumping off the walls last week. I'm like, Browns to the Super Bowl, let's go. And uh, things never stay like that in Cleveland. Uh, we only get happiness in, in short increments. Uh, so we're back to uh, ride the struggle bus a little bit again, uh, which we're gonna get into today. That's gonna be the majority of what we're gonna talk about. Um, Cause you know, like with the Ohio State game, not too much additional conversation, just kind of a blowout win. Uh, and so the Browns, it's gonna be the ma majority of what we're gonna talk about. And then I took some mailbag questions as well on Instagram. Um, if you ever have any questions you want me to answer on here or things you want me to talk about, um, definitely DM me on Instagram or look for the question box that I usually try to put up um, before I'm gonna record. Got a lot of um, passionate people in there today, which I very much understand. So we will get into all of that as well. Um, just a reminder, uh, I mentioned this last week. Uh, I have a code, a discount code for you all to use at where I'm from. Awesome, Cleveland, Ohio, any type of uh, sport gear there. Uh, great stuff, literally love everything they wear. I've had these tanks from there for years that I'm obsessed with and they fit me so well. Um, highly recommend those, but code is Abby20 if you wanna get 20% off your purchase there. Thank you to everyone who has used it so far. I very much appreciate it. Uh, definitely keep using it. I know uh, the law sucks, but you still need gear to wear. Like you have to, you gotta look good no matter what. So. Uh, definitely go ahead over there and get some. I'll put it again in the description of the episode or on the YouTube description as well. Everything will be there. Um, okay, so like I said, I'm not really gonna get into Ohio State, Western Kentucky. Uh, it, literally when I went to think of what I wanted to talk about today, I was like, who did we just play? Like I couldn't even remember the opposing team because they were so relevant to the game. We'll have more to say about Notre Dame, I'm sure, next week, but um, not too much to say about Ohio State, other than that McCord has continued to look better every single week, which is very promising, other than his fumble looked really solid, uh, but it wasn't a real test, so uh, not too much to add there. The bulk, like I said, of what we got to talk about is what just happened on Monday Night Football. I just don't really want to play in prime time, to be honest. It's bad vibes, bad vibes for this team. Too much pressure and attention. Everyone was watching and we just embarrassed ourselves um, and it wasn't great. Lots to discuss, but I think the biggest thing that happened in that game was the very awful, unfortunate, just brutal injury that Nick Chubb suffered in the second quarter of the game. Uh, looked like just a pretty standard run and you couldn't really tell from the original, original camera angle um, that they showed on TV. It looked like, you know, maybe they just clipped clipped him a little bit, um, but nothing nothing bad that would give me any red flags. Uh, and then you heard the broadcast say that they were not going to play it in the stadium or, or not in the stadium. They weren't going to play it on the TV because it was that brutal of an injury to look at, which is very rare. They almost show every single thing that happens, no matter how bad it is. Uh, we, we usually watch it. Um, so that was obviously a big red flag. And then you could hear them show it in the stadium and the entire crowd of Pittsburgh fans just went like, oh, immediately. Um, and that was a really bad sign. Um, and you're just holding your breath, I think for everyone, their minds went back to his injury in college when he played at Georgia, that he basically tore every single thing in his knee and they had, had to really completely reconstruct his entire knee um, and just feeling like uh, he was gonna have to have that same thing happen again. Um, and then obviously when the clips come out on social media, I did end up seeing it. I was trying to avoid it at first. Uh, and then it just kind of came up on Twitter. And I've just not really seen a leg bend like that. Didn't know that was possible. Um, and you know, he doesn't react to much. He's not like a vocal emotional type guy. And so to see him wincing in pain like that, it was clear that he wasn't going to be okay and they brought the card out and man my heart just breaks for him like the game went on and we scored like not too far after that because we were you know maybe 10 yards away from the end zone at that point um and I didn't even cheer I was just like in such shock because I think Nick Chubb 
is really the heart and soul of this football team. And it, it was clear based on how every player talked about him post game. And honestly, just the look on all of their faces during the game, they did not seem right uh, because he went down. And I think that deeply affected a lot of people. Nick Chubb is everything that is good about football. He is hardworking. He is a joy to watch. He has overcome a lot of the current expectations for running backs in this league where they're expected to have like two good seasons and then drop off. Um, and that's part of the whole conversation going on right now about running back value. I think Nick Chubb has been different than a lot of those guys and the longevity he has had so far in his career on the Browns and the way every single year, no matter what, he is consistently just that good. Um, and you know, I think for me personally, I, I was thinking about this. He's he's the only jersey I have on the team, and I feel good about wearing his jersey when I when I do. And that's the player that I you know want to represent us. And I think, gosh, it's been such a hard off season the last few years for Browns fans that it felt like Nick Chubb was the one universally loved thing by everyone in every organization, every fan base, every team, every player. It felt like. Nick Chubb was the guy that someone would say, I hate the Browns, but I love Nick Chubb. I love the way that guy plays. I love the way he works. That was their like asterisk about the Cleveland Browns was that they might not like us, but they love him. Um, and I, I felt so proud of that, you know, it, it really, um, it, it was meaningful. And so it, it's so hard to see him go down like that. Um, you just hate it. And I mean, you have every player tweeting out love and support for him. You have players from other sports, you have LeBron, you have a lot of the Cavs players tweeting out support. Just felt like everyone was uh, really feeling for him and would give him their knee in that moment if they could. Um, so definitely a huge bummer and probably the biggest thing that happened in that game. Uh, on the football side, it's like no matter what, it's next man up and Jerome Ford had to come in and get more production than you know he's had in his career so far. Um, ended up having like a decent night. Wasn't great, I would say. I think maybe his stats look a little bit inflated. He had 16 carries for 106 yards, one of them being that 69-yard run that he had, which that for me was the moment I would want to, you know, focus on and hope that he can replicate because he found a way to turn on a, another gear when he was doing that run. It was like incredible. You thought he reached his top speed and then he just pushes a little harder to get past that last defender, ends up getting down on uh, the one yard line and uh, Pierre Strong ends up scoring. So Jerome unfortunately didn't get the score there, but uh, it was good to see that he had that in him. Uh, I think the big concern for him is going to continue to be, can he protect the ball? I know they have concerns about that for him. And, you know, when he was being scouted as a player in college, that was a big concern. Uh, so I hope, you know, they he continues to work on that and be hyper aware of uh, protecting the ball because, um, as I'll talk about, turnovers cost this game for us. So we're, we're not going to need our running back to be contributing to that at all. Um, but felt pretty good about what he did. Uh, so the news today is that Andrew Barry has been making some calls around the league, potentially trading for Cam Akers has been thrown out there. And then Kareem Hunt also met with the team today. Um, he's been living in Cleveland, so not super, super shocking. Obviously, he's from here. Um, so that's not very surprising. Um, and look, I don't think anything they're going to do is going to compare to what Nick Chubb is. Um, but I just hope if they do go like the Kareem route, I just want people to really manage their expectations with what his production is going to look like. He is not the same running back he was like five years ago. He has clearly fallen off in the last few years. Last year, um, he definitely struggled uh, to really get going at any point in the season. He's also had an injury history, so I think everyone should really manage expectations. If we go the Kareem Hunt route again, don't feel like he is going to, you know, be the top Kareem Hunt that we have seen in his his prime days. Um, but I guess, you know, the one good thing that, you know, like I mentioned, the conversation that's been happening with the running back position and just value at the position is you hope that Ford can be that guy that's next man up and that the drop off isn't as significant as it would be at some of the other positions if you lose a star player like that. That's the hope at the end of the day, but I don't want to say that in any way to dismiss or put down um, the value of Nick Chubb on this team. 
as not just a, a player, but a person. I think he means a lot to these guys as a, a leader and not a leader that's a vocal leader, but a silent leader by the way that he puts in the work every single day. Everyone wants to be like Nick Chubb. And I think that's hard to find because um, I think it's a lot easier to try to be a uh, loud and boisterous vocal leader uh, to show people, hey, I lead. Uh, but I think it's a, a really big deal that he leads in such a different way and people still value that and respect him on their own uh, without, you know, uh, any prompting. So interested to see what happens with the running back position in the future, but obviously such a huge part of the game. Um, I'll start with a, a positive here before we get into some of the other negatives. Um, the defense still freaking awesome. Like the Browns defense is really good. Grant Delpit had an awesome interception. He is going to have a Pro Bowl season with the way he's playing. If he continues to keep this up, that is a Pro Bowl season in the works for Grant Delpit. Really proud of him and happy for him that that is uh, what he is doing so far this year. Um, it was just, it's really good to see. Defense across the board, I mean, they, I, I don't think Pittsburgh has a good offense by any means. Uh, but I think it was important that they once again took care of business. Like it genuinely was not their fault that we lost this game in the fourth quarter. Going into the fourth quarter, the Browns were up by three points. The Pittsburgh offense generated negative seven yards of total offense in that fourth quarter. Okay, negative seven down by three. You would think the Cleveland Browns won that game. They did not. <laughs> they did not win that game because of offensive turnovers. So uh, really tough for the defense there to try to put things away and um, not have it happen because of uh, bad errors on the other side of the ball. Um, but I felt like across the board, lots of guys had a good game. Um, pass rush was was out there cooking for sure. A uh, couple guys had some sacks and um, I felt like even a lot of the, the secondary was doing pretty well again. Grant, uh, not Grant, um, um, Denzel, Denzel Ward looked, I thought really good throughout the game. He had one um, where I'm, I'm not really sure what happened, uh, when he was covering pickens on one. Uh, but other than that, I thought his, his coverage was awesome. Both him and Newsom went off the field for a little bit and came back. I think everything is okay with them there. Same with Zedarius. He went out for a bit, came back. So, uh, hopefully everything's fine, but oh, gosh, after the Knicks stuff, you hated to see anyone else go down. It was like, my God, what is happening? Like, this cannot be going well. Um, again, those primetime games, I feel like, are always injury-ridden, just brutal, especially an AFC North matchup where you've just got guys really going at each other. I think um, the, the injuries start to really stack up in those, but it feels like most of them are going to be okay. Um, so we'll see with Tennessee next week. What I'm most interested to see for them is in two weeks how they look against the Baltimore Ravens. I think that's going to be a really big test. Their offense has been pretty good so far. Lamar is looking like Lamar. Um, so I want to see how they, they fare against that team. Because, God, for whatever reason, Pittsburgh has our number. We have Cincinnati's number. Pittsburgh has our number. It doesn't matter if we are supposed to be the better team. If we are talented by a mile, doesn't matter. Still, somehow, they manage to win these games, even when they don't have any offense, like literally a non-existent offense. Um, so definitely interested to see what that's going to look like come week four. I think that's going to be a really big test for this defense because I just don't think I want to say like Kenny Pickett and that group is like a true test for the Cleveland Browns. Um, okay, so got to get into a little bit more of the offense and what we saw in this game that was really frustrating. So obviously Deshaun did not play well. Um, first play of the game, not his fault, this one specifically, threw a pick six. Harrison Bryant, not sure what that was. Not sure what that was. He needs to not drop the ball anymore. Very frustrating. This is two weeks in a row now. Very costly air. Um, so not, not a fan of that. Um, so I'm not going to put that one specifically on Deshaun, but man, it was hard to go down seven, nothing to start the game in one of these hard fought battles. Like you just can't have that happen. Um, and you know, just throughout the course of the game, it felt like Deshaun just wasn't seeing everything. Um, and I don't know if it's a communication error between him and the pass catchers or what's going on, but it just felt like he wasn't seeing everything or a miscommunication was happening that, uh, the ball was just not beaten 
it was not getting to where it needed to be. Um, and whoever that's on, um, I, I can't tell you, I don't know their exact game plan, but um, I can tell you it was repeatedly happening throughout the game and they had an entire summer to really connect and figure this out. And it just, it wasn't coming together at all. Um, I think another bit of a struggle with him, which is something we already knew about him, and this is a risk you take with a lot of the really mobile quarterbacks, um, Deshaun being one of those, is they hold on to the ball longer. Um, and there's supposed to kind of be a cost-benefit analysis when you look at a quarterback that plays this type of game where you say, hey, we know you're probably going to take more sacks uh, because you're going to hold on to the ball longer because you're trying to, you're just trying to wait and see if you can make those plays, um, those big plays, those splashy plays, those plays that only certain guys in the league can make. Uh, so you're going to sometimes make those. And then sometimes you're just going to take a sack that kind of sucks. Um, but it's worth it because of those good moments. We're not getting those good big moments with Deshaun yet, which makes the sacks that he's taking really frustrating. Um, and I think that's something that they're going to need to obviously continue to work on. He also has to definitely protect the ball. That fumble was a, a brutal fumble. And honestly, at the point in the game it was, it did really affect the outcome. Um, and it's just, it's really just not acceptable. I think the other thing that was a little bit shocking was his two face mask errors. Not sure I've ever seen a quarterback have two of those in one game. Um, and he did have two of those. 30 yards total in penalties um, really affects a drive. Uh, and that was those were pretty brutal and those I don't know if that's a, a mental error if he's getting frustrated in the game but uh, he's gonna have to clean that up too because you can't let your emotions get the best of you in those moments and do something that is gonna cost your team uh, potentially a score based on having a 15 yard penalty happen um, to your offense that really changes what you can do and what you're gonna be able to run as an offense so uh, definitely frustrating and look like I know it's week two We've had Deshaun Watson in Cleveland for eight games now, the first six being last season, which everyone kind of wrote off because of the suspension, the lack of time that they had getting to know each other and him getting to know the offense. Um, and I'm very much on board with that. I know that last year is kind of a bit of a wash, um, but he's really going to have to start getting it together soon or there's going to be a lot of questions being asked because, look, this is what happens when you pay a quarterback $230 million guaranteed. You have certain expectations for what you want to see out there, and uh, it's not this product. You do not expect your defense to be carrying your offense in those situations. You pay a quarterback that much to get you out of bad situations and, and to make the plays when other people are struggling. When your star running back goes down, you expect your, your star quarterback to step up and take over the game um, and we just haven't seen that yet and I know it's week two I was more emotional and frustrated about it last night than I think I am now sometimes you just need some time to cool down and like I said I think the Chubb injury you just mentally affected everyone I know it made me more emotional about the entire game like it was frustrating to watch uh, just because of that uh, so I think I've had more time to cool off and I'm like okay it's week two we're one and one one and one in the division as well we just got to, you know, keep pushing forward, keep stacking wins like it, it can still happen, um, but it's going to have to be significantly better going forward or that's just not going to be the case. Um, and we just we need to start seeing more flashes of it. I would feel better if maybe we were seeing more flashes than we are. Like he'll still have moments where he'll make a really nice throw and they'll have a great play. But there was one to um, um I think it was Amari Cooper on the sideline that um, great catch by Amari and a great great place ball by by Deshaun and we just need more of those moments to be put together um and for the mistakes to be cleaned up so that those good moments result in scoring drives like we can't keep bringing the ball down the field and not having it result in points like the Grant Delpit interception where the Browns got the ball on the Pittsburgh Pittsburgh's 19 yard line and they weren't able to score on that obviously they missed the field goal but you should have a touchdown on that there is no excuse for not scoring a touchdown when your defense gets a turnover that gives you the ball 19 yards away from scoring, you do not have to take the ball down the field. Um, and so things like that, um, we're going to want to start seeing more of. I think the Titans is going to be a really interesting opportunity. I was reading something today about their um, passing defense that so far it's like bottom five in the league. 
So this is a really good opportunity to test your offense and see if you can start to get some things going, get some comfortability out there, um, and just hope for the best. So <sighs> that was a lot. Um, brutal loss. Hate losing to Pittsburgh. Least favorite team in the division. Always will be. Don't care what the Bengals say. We, we will always hate Pittsburgh and Cleveland more than we will any other team in the division. That's just how it works. I don't, I feel like Pittsburgh might hate Baltimore more than they hate us, but we hate Pittsburgh more than we hate anyone else. Um, and I, I know I mentioned that because last week Bengals fans were like, this is the Browns Super Bowl is beating the Bengals. And I'm like, we are over that in like two seconds because all we care about is finally trying to get a win in Pittsburgh and we just can't do it. Um, that would be more of our Super Bowl than it would be actually um, beating the Bengals for like the 700th time. Like we do that all the time. I want to beat Pittsburgh in Pittsburgh so badly. Um, so maybe next year, there's always next year as we always say in Cleveland. Um, okay, so let's get to some mailbag questions that are all revolving around the game and everyone's very emotional. I had just a lot of like, where do we go from here? Um, why am I a Cleveland sports fan? Why does God hate Cleveland? Like these were, these were most of the messages I've, I've been receiving. Um, and a lot of just like thoughts and love for, um, Nick Chubb. Um, so I got one about Nick Chubb on, do we think Chubb has played his last game as a Cleveland Brown last night? This is, um, look, I'm not a doctor, so I can't, um, perfectly answer what his future is going to be, but I do know that with the way his knee injury originally happened, the fact that it's the same knee that he did it to again, um, it's going to be a really tough comeback, especially at his age now. Um, I think he's 28, I want to say. Um, and it's going to be really, it's going to be really tough and it's going to be a long recovery and running backs, as I said, already have kind of a shorter uh, career span where they're thought of to be valuable in this league. So it's going to be tough for him but if anyone is going to be able to do it I think it's going to be Nick Chubb with the work ethic he has the way he fights um I think if you want to put bets on someone that's the guy to put bets on so god I hope not like I do not want that to be the way he goes out in the city and I, I don't think it will be like I, I truly don't think that this this organization would even let him go out that way like he if he wants to come back and he wants to recover he will have another opportunity here um, so I, I, I'm just hoping for the best in that because he deserves way better than having that be, um, the last moment related to that. Someone asked me if I thought it was a dirty hit on Chubb. Um, again, this is a hard one. I, for me to answer because I did not play the game. And so I have a hard time judging players on the specific ways in which they are, um, tackling other guys, because I think there's um, a lot that goes on mentally with it um, when the game is moving so quickly. Different things that different guys are taught on how to bring certain types of players down. I know Nick Chubb is one of the hardest guys in the league to bring down. Um, so just want to preface it with that. But I have seen um, quite a few people who I think know the game pretty well um, say that they felt like there was uh, that was a little bit of a dirty hit. And maybe not intentionally um, in the way that he was like, I'm going to take Nick Chubb out for the year, but more so just like not being aware of the proper way that guys are taught um, to tackle in those situations that you shouldn't just be diving directly at someone's knee at an angle in the way that he was in that um, while someone else is already bringing him down. So I don't want to speak specifically on like he for sure was malicious and wanted to take him out. Like, I don't know what's in his heart and what's in his mind. I'm not gonna um, put that on him, but just from people who have played the game, um, there's quite a few people saying that they felt like um, it was a dirty hit and you're not supposed to um, approach someone that way. So very unfortunate for sure, if that is the case. Um, okay, let's see, what else do we have here? Do the Browns start Ford or look to pick up a better running back for the season? Is Ford enough? This was kind of a combination of a lot of questions about Jerome Ford, which I did talk about a little bit, um, but to give my just general opinion on the topic, um, I don't know how much value you're going to get about bringing all these different other guys in. Maybe bring in a veteran guy that can kind of be um, that voice of reason in the group so that you have that for Jerome Ford. Um, but based on what I saw, like he 
he looked decent and he had his one long breakaway, breakaway run, like I mentioned. So I don't feel awful about moving forward with him. It might be nice to just bring in a veteran presence um, just to have some safety in there as well. Um, I don't know if it's going to be enough. What's going to be enough is our passing game getting going. It's not going to be Jerome Ford winning us a Super Bowl. I can tell you that much right now. Um, so I think uh, that's probably the more important part to focus on. Uh, if that gets going, I think Ford is going to be just fine in, at the position. Um, okay, so then we also had a couple Kevin Stefanski type questions. Um, people asking, is it Kevin's fault? Is it Deshaun's fault? Is the, it the offensive line's fault? Um, is Kevin going to get fired? Um, I don't know because it's week two. So we have, I think, a ways to go until coaches start getting fired. I'm not sure what that record would need to be in order for him to get fired, but um, it's definitely further into the season. So I, I can't speak to that right now. Um, but I think yesterday's loss was a lot of different people's faults. I don't think, and you guys know this if you've listened to this for a while, I don't think it's productive to blame everything on coaching and play calling when the guys who are on the field are openly missing catches and openly missing throws. It's really hard for me to put all of that on a coach and a play caller if the plays are there to be made. And um, as I've started to dig through a lot of the clips from the game, you are seeing guys open. And now I don't know the obviously exact calls on like, is that guy supposed to be in that position? Did he run the correct route? I'm sure there are instances where other guys are messing up. Um, and you know, that's why Deshaun didn't hit them, but it, it is definitely a huge problem that he is missing guys. And I just, I refuse to just put that all on the play caller and say he should be doing things differently. At the beginning of the game, people were very upset of like, you got to run chub more run chub all of the time. And I just, first of all, like, unfortunately now we can't anymore. We have Jerome Ford and I don't want people to start getting in the mindset that we just need to constantly run Jerome Ford too, because we, in order to be the team that like at the highest level that this team could be a Super Bowl contending team, it is going to be by passing the ball. And I know it's not looking great right now, but that doesn't mean you stop trying and you don't do it anymore because they need to do it to figure it out. And if they can't, then there's the wrong people here in general. And this is the, the wrong personnel on this team. And you got to start over then. Like, but the answer isn't just run the ball. The answer is you got to keep working it out to get your answers. Is this the guy? Is Deshaun Watson the guy? Do we have the right receivers in this building? If not, the, your question is answered if they can't get it done. But I'm not just going to say Kevin should just tell them to run the ball uh, and then we just don't re really worry about passing anymore. That makes no sense to me. And if we have intentions of actually being a playoff team and maybe even a Super Bowl contending team, then we, are, we have the wrong game plan um, in place. So that is in general how I feel about that, which I think you guys already know. I'm not excusing every single play call Kevin Stefanski makes either. I think there were some weird calls. Um, I was confused on some of the um, like fourth and one, third and one calls I thought were a little bizarre. I don't know if Deshaun doesn't want to do QB sneaks. I'm kind of curious about that because it doesn't seem like that's something that they're doing. Um, so some questions on that, but I don't know if that's coming from Kevin or if that's coming from Deshaun specifically because there's some quarterbacks that just don't really do QB sneaks. Um, so yeah, there were, there were weird moments, but there were more moments that the players on the field were missing themselves. Kevin didn't fumble the ball. Kevin wasn't making those mistakes. T Kevin didn't throw an interception. Kevin didn't drop the ball. Like I, I can't stress enough how much more I want to hold the players on the field accountable for the mistakes they're making, uh, and hoping that they can clean it up. Uh, so that we can get an honest look at what this offense would look like because it's incredibly hard uh, to scheme a game out when no one can catch the ball and the throws uh, aren't accurate. So um, the other part of the one question being the offensive line. I think the offensive line might be a little bit worse this year than everyone realizes. I think the Browns have gotten this narrative that they have this phenomenal offensive line and that's been the case for many years. But when you kind of look at the breakdown of it now, you have Joel Bentonio, who's obviously the clear pro bowler. This guy is amazing. He is like locked down part of the reason that this offensive line has been so good for so long. 
Wyatt Teller has some really good moments, but I don't know if he is as good as he was his Pro Bowl season. Like, I don't think he has returned to that form. Um, so that's important to note. You have Conklin out, Dewan Jones in his place, who I actually thought did a decent job. Look, it's a tough task. You're going up against that Steelers defense. It's not easy. So I give him props for not completely falling apart. I think he had one penalty, I remember. Um, but other than that, I don't think he had, you know, some bad moments, but in general, I think did a decent job. Um, you have Posich at center, who I don't think is as good this year as he, as he was last year. Um, so lacking a little bit there. And then you have Jedrick Wills, who is just, I don't know. I, I struggle with that conversation because I know it's hard for us to find other offensive linemen that are going to be able to play at his level, but it is incredibly frustrating when he does give up, give up on plays, um, and just isn't, he doesn't appear to always be playing very hard at all moments. Um, so that is definitely a little frustrating. So there's cracks in this offensive line for sure. Um, combine that with a quarterback that holds onto the ball very long for a very long time. I think that's where you start running into a lot of these issues um, and questions that make you wonder, is it the offensive line's fault or is it Deshaun Watson's fault? And I think it's a combination of both at the moment. So you just hope that um, Dewan Jones continues to grow and maybe Posich can kind of return to the form he had last year. Um, that Jed can just figure it out, uh, that Wyatt Teller can return to his Pro Bowl form. Um, and that's really all you can um, hope for at this point. So um, I think that was all of the main questions that I wanted to answer. There were, you guys gave me a lot this time. I think everyone was just really mad. <laughs> everyone was so upset. I was like, honestly, I get it. I feel all of you. So um, send them in every week. Really, really appreciate it. I like being able to answer those just to see what people want to hear about, what they're curious about. Um, and if I have any, any interesting take to offer on it. Uh, but that is all I have for you guys today. Um, we got Titans up next. We've got Notre Dame this weekend, big football weekend. Again, a season's already flying by, man. Like I feel like I've, it's week 10 already. I know it was week two for NFL. Feels like it's been even even longer than that um but it's just going to keep flying by even faster so even despite the awful losses trying to enjoy it but thank you guys so much for listening once again use my where i'm from code please 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 use it uh love their stuff i want to see everyone wearing it um i love when i just see people wearing stuff in the muni lot or places in general because i think they have cute gear and men and women it's all great I love all of it. Um, so definitely use my code Abby20. It is in the description of this episode. So you will find it there. Uh, follow, share, subscribe, rate, review, all of that good stuff, any platform, whatever it is. I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for listening. And even despite these losses, go Browns.